Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So it's been a week since I've shown you a video. Uh, where it's at. Uh, last video, we got the hardware in. I reset my Unraid, set up the array, got all the hard drives going. Um, I hadn't run a parity check yet. I got the VM set up and installed basically and then I wanted to get to a point where I could actually screen record and go into the breakdown of all the VMs and stuff. So I'm going to do that, but I want to do that from the screen recorder with my webcam and I'm going to get that set up too. So this one is somewhere in between those points. Uh, I've got both VMs in, got the keys in, they're you know legit registered now, uh, video cards and stuff assigned out, and I'm going to go into major detail with the splitting and the assignments and everything, but I'm going to do that in the screen recorder. So right now, I've got both VMs going. I've got Steam installing on this one. I gave this one 8 cores, 16 threads. It's also uh, watching a Titans episode right now that this VM is on the receiving side of, but I actually do have the Unraid set up running Plex and it's on it's on the drive. So it's it's sending that actually out through my Aquantia 10 gigabit connection. And then these two here are um, Intel one gigabit NICs and they're for each of the, the VMs. So each machine technically has its own network controller and I assign those out. Then of course I've got my two video cards that currently each unit is using but when I make that script which I haven't done yet for the one major machine I am going to put both of them in and I have my SLI bridge in there and the SLI will work. So I'll also do that but I'm going to do that through the screen recorder. Um, but yeah it, it's going right now. Uh, I've got it set up. It can do some torrenting and things but what one thing the like actually what the real reason i wanted to make the video is that after i got all the hardware in and everything else my my 4.2 gigahertz my 4200 megahertz it was back down at 3.5 and i don't know if it was such a big hardware change and like it, I, I moved pcie slots around like there there was a pretty big change to the motherboard somehow it must have loaded the BIOS defaults at, at some point, which ended up knocking my RAM back from like 233 to, or I mean, uh, two, what is it, 2933? Uh, that's what the XMP is. It ended up knocking it back to like what the standard is, which is like 2100 megahertz. But uh, one thing with Ryzen, with Threadripper, like actually with all systems really, is you wanna have your, your RAM in the XMP if you can. And speed is important, but also like low latency, like uh, RAM is, is important too. Like, um, you know, so I want to be 2933 on 16s. Uh, basically running Threadripper, running the four channels, eight dim slots, the way that they are, like in this generation, that's about as fast as you can get with the way the Infinity Fabric works. People can can get above it, but they, they really have to do something like, so what I've got is like a very nicely mated, set of RAM and I have in the past actually before I lost my overclocks I actually had it and the board has another instead of XMP it's like a board specific XMP that ASRock's actually tested on the RAM that I have in the machine and it's certified and it has like a specific set that it runs at and it'll actually run it at 3033 but right now I can't get it and to be honest one of the settings and one of the voltages that you tend to play with when you're working with RAM is SOC and uh, I can't remember what it stands for. I want to say socket on chip, but basically it's the memory controller on the, the CPU die head, right? Now, the thing about like, cause like the CPU board has all of the, it, ha it has many things on it. And one of the things that they did was the memory controller, which has benefits. Um, one of the downsides to it though is like, so anyways, to get the 3000, I have to bring the SOC up. Um, from whatever it is stock up to around like 1.05 somewhere in there, which is technically safe But one of the things that I'm running into is I don't have my my CPU voltages quite tweaked just right I, I don't remember the settings as much. I actually maybe I should just go into it So this is my unraid and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it But what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna run a shutdown command here I'm gonna reboot the whole system, which it should actually tell both Windows VMs to shut down here. It should get the command for it. There we go. One, two, so they're shutting down. 
So I'm trying to get it back up to 4.4 gigahertz. I've got it at 42 right now. Uh, with the 42, I seem to have my core voltage high. Um, I can't remember exactly what it's at. 1.378. The the chips can go up to like 1.44, 1.45. People say like 1.41 is fine. Uh, the problem is, is once you get up there and you're vibrating at high frequencies, they, they get warm. Even with that triple radiator with six fans on it, you know, three push, three pull, I'm getting warm. So at 4.2 at the voltages that I have, when I run a stress test, which like scene bench there, it, it's pretty, pretty heavy duty stress test. But when I run that, uh, my temperatures get up like I'm, I'm at the peaks like under synthetic load, full load like that, when I'm really pushing it, I'm at like the peaks that these processors are supposed to run at for everything to stay safe, like, um, you know, keeping under that that thermal limit. So I'm running a little bit hot and I, I remember to get 4.4, I had some voltage tweaks. And then the other thing that you play with is um, V droop. It's like a voltage droop setting. Um, I'm just gonna reboot here in a sec. Uh, the, the server's like shutting down. It's technically, it boots up with a head, but then uh, as in a video card out, display output, but then I actually take it and I reboot the card and I assign it to a VM. So when it shuts down, I don't actually have, here we go. I don't actually have any sort of video card in the machine that tells me the shutdown process and where it is, but I don't really need it. And it, it seems to go pretty good. Uh, so I'm just logging in to uh, my BIOS here. So what happens is it flashes my boss, and then I also have two SATA controllers in there that I dedicate one of them out to each VM, but it, it also detects those and the hard drives on those. So there's my RAM. I got it up at 2933, which it, it takes that setting, like when we go to my uh, OC tweaker settings here. So, so like it's XMP profile one, which it really only has the one. So, it, and it's 2933 that it's set at. And basically, that's just the standard um, standard voltage that it wants to run at too, right? 1.35 volts, and it seems fine there. So I'm not playing around with it much. Uh, what I do have for a manual overclock is just 4200, and I'm locking that to all the cores. I want them all to vibrate at it, which they seem to do pretty well. And I've slowly been dropping my voltage, right? I'm actually even lower than I thought. I'm not 1.37. I'm 1.3625. So going down one notch from that, let's see. 1.35625, okay. So, you know, you, you go down in these set increments and I'll, I'll run that increment, but one of the things that I've still got going on for that voltage droop here, load line calibration. And um, when we look on the side, as the, the voltage for the core versus how heavily it gets loaded, right? So as, when you assign all 16 cores, 32 threads to it, it's gonna draw really heavy. And it's uh, how it works is level five allows for the most drop. And then level one, or if you go up to like auto, it, it tries to actually prevent it completely. So you'd think, well, you just want to run level one. But the problem is, is it's like, hey, CPU gets a load. Here's all the power that you want. So you give the, the CPU more power than it probably needs. And one of the problems with that is, is your heat spikes up right away. So like we can dissipate heat pretty quick with with the liquid cool setup, but when you have those giant spikes, like it, it shoots up right away and uh, you don't want it to be higher than it needs to be. So I'm running it in the middle right now on three and it has been very stable, but that was at, that was at the 1.6, which I just brought it down to 1.5. Uh, DRAM voltage, keeping it the same, that should be fine. So um, yeah. SOC voltage here. So I've just left it at auto, but you can like, you can go manual and I can boost it. But one of the problems is, is I'm starting to add, the RAM's fine right now. I don't know if I need the 3000 um, setting, you know, to get that extra hundred megahertz, but in, in bringing up that voltage, it, it starts to add even more heat to the processor. And I don't really need that right now. So I haven't, I haven't been wanting to change it, but I did just drop the voltage just slightly to the processor. So save changes and exit. I'm going to actually reboot it, which when it boots up, the system will grab, uh, grab the top video card, which you think is the first one in the loop. But when you, I look at the IO MMU groupings and everything else, actually the bottom of it seems to be first and primary according to the way Unraid sees it. Anyways, it's uh, booting up now. So that's motherboard. 
and we'll come up here and then that's my first controller that goes to uh, one Windows VM and then it'll flash my second controller here that goes to the second VM it's loading up all those hard drives plus like the SATA controller that's on board now there's the Unraid boot so it's just booting in without a UI but again uh, once it starts up I take the video card and reboot it which um, I, I talked about it in the last video but you you basically just copy it like copy the uh, the BIOS ROM in it over and then it can like to my understanding is you just live reboot the card and then it reassigns it to a new host it, it's it's a neat process there's a good <clears throat> a good tutorial on on like how to do it and it works flawlessly for me with the 1080 Ti's I don't have any trouble at all so there we go so right now Unraid's just booting in so as soon as Unraid loads it grabs all of my hard drives in the st stack of my array here and then it fires them up <coughs> gets the array going once the array is up and running it will boot up uh, my virtual machines and it normally boots the virtual machine staggered, which I think it's going to go here now. Let's see. They both kind of flickered, so maybe it's doing them together. No, that one went first. And then normally there's about like a five or a 10 second delay in stagger. So this VM actually booted already because it's booting off that NVMe drive, you know, for PCIe lanes. Like it's, it's fast. And when I did those disc pulls, like they're, they pull really quick. So here's the second one. It's booting up now. going to log in quick okay so they're coming up here um, it's much easier to do with the screen recorder but we'll quickly log in here so array is online these are my disks how full they are so eight terabyte eight terabyte eight terabyte four and four I've got a total of 32 terabytes and this one is my parody and you know parodies valid everything looks good this is like a cache cache disk that um i use in unraid like uh, applications and certain things are on it there's the flash disk and then these come up with the other controller or actually the two controllers so it's controller one controller two and that's what i end up dedicating out to my vms which are here and here and again i'm going to do a screen recording with the vms and the breakdown and everything in the IO MMU groups, but I've got them up right now. One of the things that I'm still dealing with, so I'm at 4.2 gigahertz. We've got a fair bit of core activity at the moment here. But right now, actually, to be totally honest, I have to uh, change this. And we need to reassign all of those cores to the VM because I'm going to stress test them under load so it's just going to reboot this machine and reassign the other uh, four cores eight threads there so it's a total of eight like eight cores 16 threads eight cores 16 threads I'm gonna run a sin bench and then I'll just show you how quick the temperatures spike up right now and we'll see if we're stable I dropped the voltage a little bit more and I'm just wondering if we're stable yeah. sure you get a lot of reflection on the glass you don't see it nearly as much in real life as you do on the camera. Still have all of those cables to plug in. Okay, so the end is just starting up here again. Normally when you do a hardware change, the boot takes a little bit longer. This is R23, we're going to say start crunching, load this one up, start crunching, okay. So right away, we've got fans cranking up, but we need to get us a display for Aurora here. Okay, here we go. Cores are maxed. 
32 threads, 16 cores, just 100% full utilization. Machines are crunching. And it's moving air. And the crazy thing is, is that triple rod, even if I take this off, it does move a little bit more air here. But that triple rod is blowing like noticeably warm air. It's amazing the heat that that thing's putting off. Anyways, it's crunching, but like, look, 80.2. And that's like direct reading on, on like the core die. And they say like 80 is like the max that you want to be at with these things. I think they like critically shut down at like 86. So, uh, 82.5. Oh, she's climbing. Realistically, I never have my machine under a synthetic load like this. It's not crunching video data. It's not, you know, rendering game lines, things like that. But you still want to have it in like a safe point. 82.8. Maybe it's regulating there. But... Uh, on that note, that's not a heat soaked rad right now, so it's still warming that air up. Like, let that rad go for a bit. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So, that drop is our 23, instead of just running one run, it's looping. So, that's it reloading the loop. And uh, that one, like, startled me the first time I saw it, but that's all it is. The other thing that I noticed, uh, it's interesting, but when I'm under heavy load with the video cards, and the video cards are going, they exhaust the heat quite well. But in my internal temperatures, my cache device, my NVMe drive, gets a little bit warm. Like right now it's at 43. 43 is not too bad, but it'll get as high as like 46, which 46 gives you warnings. So my, uh, my cache drive, which is an actual hard drive, but it's, it's an enterprise one and it's quite quick. But it, it does calculations every time I save to any of the data drives, right? It's always modifying. So it, it sees a pretty heavy write cycle. But it, it runs a little bit warmer too. I've noticed that as well, where all of the other um, drives tend to be in the 30s. So, but it still seems stable at like what I'm running at there now, at 1.35 mark, which is, is good. That helps keep my temperatures a little bit more under control. Which, let's take a look at them again, see where I'm at. Oh, right at the critical line. Maybe I'm too hot. Maybe that's too hot. Stop, kill one side of it. Let's see if it drops. Yeah, it does come down. So I'm going to play around with the voltages a little more, see if I can get them down. And if I can get them back to what I had for a setting where it was running cool enough, I think I'm going to try and get a little bit. In, uh, the uh, SOC as well and see if I can get back to the 3033 megahertz so but she's still running a little warm so I'm gonna work on setting up my uh, screen recording and I'll get the, the webcam installed and I'm gonna talk about the scripts a little bit I might actually try and work on uh, putting together and I can do it through the screen recorder copy and pasting the whole process of uh, doing the big massive script and having the massive one work and see how it works and one of the things that you got to do is you got to you got to tweak the Windows UU, uh, UUID and I normally just try and tweak it by one number on the very end and it's enough that it doesn't cause a problem with the loading program and Windows doesn't seem to complain too much or I haven't noticed it or run into any issues that way so that is the plan, but I'll install some soft screen software and we'll show some scripts as well.